Hi everyone, in this lesson I want to explain how you can use a graph to solve polynomial equations and inequalities. So here's an example. It says to use the following graph of this function g of x equals negative x squared minus 2x plus 3. So here's the graph of this down here, negative x squared minus 2x plus 3. Notice if I plug in x equals 0, I'd get 3. That's that point. If I were to plug in like x equals 1, I'd get negative 1 squared. That'd be negative 1. And, and uh, minus 2 times 1 would be minus uh, 2 and negative 1 minus 2 is minus 3 plus 3 is 0 and that gives me that point so when I plot all the ordered pairs that make this uh, this function true I get this this upside down parabola and it asked me to use this graph to solve where the negative x squared minus 2x plus 3 equals 0 well again if I compare this equation right here with what I have up here what I'm doing is I'm letting g of x be 0 right uh, if I let this here be 0, that means the y value is 0. If I look down here on the graph where the y value is 0, you can see it's 0 at these x values, right? If I plug in x equals 1, I'm going to get 0. And if I plug in x equals negative 3, I'm going to get 0, okay? So right away from the graph, you can see that the, the solutions of this equation are x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. That's the wonderful thing about the graph. Once you understand this, it makes a lot of things much easier. You can skip through all of the algebra and, and see the answer right on the graph. The second part of this uh, problem asks us to solve the inequality. Where is the negative x squared minus 2x plus 3 greater than or equal to negative 5? Well, this red upside down parabola, that is, that's this whole part right here. What I need is the negative 5. Now, y equals negative 5 uh, is going to be down here. That's a line, right? So y equals negative 5. That's a line uh, with slope 0 and a y-intercept of negative 5. Right? You could think of this as y equals 0x minus 5. So, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a line down here at negative 5. So there's the negative 5. So graphically this is saying where is this red parabola, uh, where is that greater than, above, or touching, equal to the negative 5? Well you can see it's equal to the negative 5 right at these points. If I follow those up that corresponds to 2 over here and it looks like negative 4 over here. So if I put any x values between negative 4 and 2, like say, notice here at negative 3, when I plug negative 3 in, I'm going to get 0, right? That's on the red graph right here, it's here, and that is going to be greater than the negative 5 down here. If I plug in negative 2, into this right here, it's going to equal this value up here, uh, whatever that happens to be, about 3 it looks like, and that's certainly bigger than, than the negative 5. If I plug in negative 1, I'm going to be right up here, and that's that looks like it's at 4, um, and that's certainly bigger than negative 5, and so all the way over here, if I plugged in 1 and a half right here, my, my y value in the red function is going to be somewhere down here. It looks like maybe negative 2 or something like that. And that's still going to be bigger than negative 5. And right up until 2, if I plug in 2, looks like that's going to equal negative 5. But if I were to plug in a number 3 over here, then the value on the red graph, on the negative x squared minus 2x plus 3, that would be smaller. It's going to be less than negative 5, right? So my answer to this part is going to be this interval between negative 4 and uh, positive 2. And I'm going to include those two endpoints because at negative 4 it looks like uh, that exactly equals negative 5 and over at 2 it looks like it exactly equals negative 5. Okay, so that's how we can use the graph to solve both this equation and this inequality. Alright, one last problem here. It asks us to solve this equation graphically. Now this one, uh, if you wanted to solve it algebraically, we don't really have a good way to factor things that have decimals in it. And so 
uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, use the zero method. I'm going to get zero on one side. I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. That'll give me a negative 2x squared plus 3.63x plus 34.34 equals zero. Then I'm going to graph this right here and see where that graph equals zero. So I'm going to open my calculator here. And let's put in negative 2x squared plus the 3.63x plus the 34.34. And let's graph it on my standard window. And you can see it's going to cross the x-axis at a couple points, one point over here and one point over here. And then if I want to find the the exact values, I can go into the calculate menu here and calculate the zero, right? Because I want to know where it equals zero. So for hit number two there, let's give it a left bound. So if I'm looking for this zero here, I want to arrow on the left of that zero. And you can see that uh, the, because the slant of the line, if I'm on my graph down here, my x value is going to be to the left of that, of where it crosses the x-axis. I'm going to hit enter and it puts a little mark up here. And then I need to get on the right hand side of it. And uh, looks like this is going to put me on the right hand side. And then it asks for a guess. Give it a little guess, just get kind of close to it. And it tells me that my zero is going to be that value. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and take a screenshot of that. Okay. Okay, and then I'll go back and also find the other zero over here. So let's go ahead and calculate that one. So I need to go on the left-hand side of this zero, so arrow over here. If I can get over there. There it comes. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm on the left-hand side still. Hit enter. Do it on the right-hand side. That'll be good. Hit enter. And then give it a guess. Get kind of close there. And it looks like that zero is about 5.14. Again, let's take a screenshot of that. Okay, so I have the two zeros right there. So it looks like the uh, solutions to this equation then would be x equals negative 3.33 rounded to the nearest hundredth and this one would give me x equals 5.15 okay so what that means again is if I were to take these values and plug it into this original equation that would make it true and and these are the only two solutions that are going to make that true okay to actually show that on the calculator, one thing you can do, once you've used the calculator to find the zero, if I don't move the cursor, if I go ahead and quit, I can bring the x value up on my home screen, and then I could I could actually check it, right? If I were to take, take the uh, negative, I'll plug it into this one down here, negative 2x squared, uh, that'll, that'll square the, the solution that we got and multiply by negative 2 plus the 3.63x plus the 34.34 and hopefully when I hit enter that should give me zero and it does so I have great confidence that that is the correct answer